Dengan penggunaan peranti untuk lebih banyak transaksi aktiviti harian, tentunya isu pelindungan data dan juga pelan keselamatan cyber harus dititik beratkan. Menurut laporan Jabatan Statistik, akses kepada telefon bimbit, internet dan juga media sosial di Malaysia berada di atas paras 90% dalam laporan pada April lepas. Dari segi pematuhan untuk organisasi di Malaysia, mereka berada di bawah Akta Pelindungan Data Peribadi 2010 yang memastikan pengumpulan dan juga pemprosesan data data yang baik. Kita ingin melihat risiko peningkatan data ketika ini dari kacamata organisasi dan apakah yang harus dilakukan di peringkat lembaga pengarah untuk memastikan data dan juga risiko ini diuruskan dengan baik mengikut lunas undang-undang. Kita bersama dengan Naib Presiden Asia Pacific di Kohi City, Ravi Rajendran. Uh, Ravi, thank you for joining us. Ravi, tell us about the prevalent usage of uh, online services by smartphone users in Southeast Asia and also Malaysia during the pandemic and how have their behaviour when it comes to data change? Um, are they... Are these consumers or users more caref- more or less careful during the pandemic? Hey, uh, Rizal, first of all, thank you for having me here. Good morning to you. Um, I think as a result of the pandemic, we've seen a lot of businesses go online. Um, and, and of course, digital transformation is such a big thing. So online services is definitely prevalent. And there are many endpoint devices like our smartphones that we use to transact uh with the merchants online that actually means there's a lot of data that is being communicated to and fro in all these online transactions and i think that security of that data that importance of making sure we're managing that data well and it's not in the wrong hands becomes pretty crucial we got to the users i think the awareness on data privacy and security is definitely there uh, but i think we just have to be very watchful of that But I think the fundamental scenario of what the pandemic did was to drive the online business, uh, you know, in, into a hyper growth scenario. Mm-hmm. And that, therefore, we need to make sure we manage that kind of data that is generated as a result. And, and tell us, Ravi, about the need for sound data protection and also governance in the post-pandemic world, both for consumers and organizations. What gaps do organizations still have when it comes to data protection and governance? All right. Um, so I think the need for sound data protection and governance was, is, and will always be fundamental. It's required. Whether the world is facing a pandemic like COVID-19 or not, that need for data protection and governance is always there and it stems from the organization's or government's initial adoption of technology Mm -hmm. and then the world of internet. And then we move on to digital transformation like the online businesses. The adoption of new technologies such as artificial intelligence, IoT, 5G and the likes. So uh, my my belief is that the pandemic has actually just served as an accelerator for digital transformation. We all know that. Mm -hmm. And all of these technologies are prevalent and hence the need for data protection and governance. I think the other thing that's also happening, Rizal, is that um, because of this current pandemic scenario, we we are all working outside the firewall of our offices. Mm -hmm. You know, we heard of a remote workforce. We have many touch points right now. So one of the things that's happening right there is we're using many more applications online. We're leveraging the cloud a lot more, a lot more data created on-prem and in the cloud. At at the same point in time, um, the surface area for a cyber attack has increased substantially. The fact that we are outside the firewalls Mm -hmm. of our traditional offices, office environments. So I think that's something to take note that, you know, we all know ransomware is hitting us once every 11 seconds. And that surface area being increased requires us to really look hard into a sound data protection and governance strategy, especially in this pandemic. Perhaps we could dive deeper into that uh, uh, particular issue that you brought up just now. These these, uh, people working from home and um, some don't even have uh, uh, tools provided by the office and they have to use their own tools, right? This could also increase uh, risk uh, for uh, for, for, for the organisation, to the organisation. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you're right, that's that's what we call the endpoints. And to a large extent, 
a lot of us are using our own devices and some of us multiple devices. Um, and, and, it's, and because of the work from home strategy, we're, we're leveraging that. So I think that's why it's so crucial that security and protection is, is a paramount initiative, right, for organizations. We need to make sure that this data that belongs to the corporate is well protected and it doesn't fall in the wrong hands. So um, data protection and governance is also a result of top concern for the C-suite, you know, the executives for audit, for the even boards, uh, because of their wider focus on cybersecurity. And, and we all kind of know the impact what a cybersecurity attack or a cyber threat would, would be like. It will hit operations, it hits our revenue, it hits our reputation, and I think most importantly, it hits our customers, mm -hmm. our customers' data. And so that's why we need to take a very focused security posture to make sure that we just don't only focus on cyber security technology, mm -hmm. which tends to focus on the perimeter defense, because now we are all over the place. But it's more important that we have protection and governance applied to the asset that is being hunted down, which mm -hmm. is our data. And that's very, very important. So Ravi, how do we make data governance a priority in the boardroom? This is surely part of risk and compliance. Uh, have organizations looked at this uh, major portion of their risk management? Yeah, I believe a lot of organizations have looked strongly into this area. Um, I I'll just reflect back on the Malaysia PDPA Act, you know, it came out in 2013. Um, and, and it's a very crucial act, sorry, that is the, basically the um, Personal Data Protection Act. Uh, it's got three focus principles in PDPA. The security principle, which requires a, a user, a data user, to adopt specific measures to protect personal data from loss, misuse, modification, unauthorized or accidental access, or disclosure, alteration, or destruction during its processing. So this is one principle we need to look at and every organization probably needs to look at. Mm -hmm. And the other principle in the PDPA is the retention principle. This basically mandates that personal data must not be retained longer than it is necessary for the fulfillment of a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. But we've got to make sure that organizations know what data has expired, in inverted commas, and it should be deleted and not kept because mm -hmm. that doesn't comply with the retention principle. And the third area is data integrity principle. A data user to take, has to take reasonable steps to ensure that the personal data is accurate, complete, and not misleading, mm -hmm. and being kept up to date for that angle. There's a lot of responsibilities that are thrown in to the organizations based on this PDPA. And we believe that organizations can only address this challenge of providing governance and protection for the data they hold and comply with the legislations or regulations like PDPA through the power of a next-gen data manager. And now back to your original question. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Ravi. Briefly, uh, how can an organization change the perception, uh, uh, you know, or transform compliance into a business enabler? Uh, briefly, Ravi. Okay, uh, I, I think to a large extent, uh, compliance with data governance legislations and regulations and the industry's best practices is in itself a business enabler that allows organizations to be able to continue operating smoothly, avoid financial penalties and reputational damage. By leveraging the power of data management to ensure data governance and protection, organizations benefit from becoming data-driven whereby instead of being a problematic shadow, data becomes a green field of opportunities for better business decisions, for continued digital transformations, as well as embracing new technologies, like I mentioned, 5G, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, machine learning, and IoT. So I, I think the main thing for a challenge for companies is to truly understand how they can leverage their data, go beyond simply just instead of simply complying with regulations and worrying about protecting their data from cyber attacks, they should learn how to leverage data and get better insights of the data to help drive their businesses. And the best place to start is embracing the capabilities of a next-gen data management platform.